Hey everybody, Hunter Fisher, Trapper Trader, Guide Scout, and Interpreter, and Country Cook, Steve Hall here in Nashville, Tennessee, along with Pretty Miss Sheila behind the camera. Hi, she she. Hi. Man, I have been waiting for this recipe. What if, when you have a beer brat, if you added wine to that as well? We got peppers, we got onions, we got garlic, we've got beer, we got wine, and we got some Johnsonville brats. Now you can use any brats you want, but I really like Johnsonville brats because for over the counter, not getting them from your favorite butcher or maker in your own home, these things are really, really good. So I got to thinking because it's not very big around, it won't take a lot of liquid to make it pretty deep to put all our goodies in there. So I'm going to use this little five quart Dutch oven. First, I got to tell you something that happened to me years ago and how I stumbled on this recipe for now came from clear back in the 70s. Years ago we were playing the Holiday Inn in Albert Lee, Minnesota. A little teeny lounge. We had a little trio we were playing and here's everybody up at the bar and they're all drinking out of these funny tall glasses. Then they also had a half yard glass. I went on my computer and just punched it up on the screen so I can show you what I'm talking about. Let's take a look at this. I wanted to show you what I was talking about, so I went to eBay and I just typed in yard glass. And they show a bunch of three foot tall ones. This is a half yard glass, but you get the idea. It's a foot and a half tall. The bottom is kind of a ball, and then the rest looks like a beer glass. And they fill the bottom with wine, and the rest with beer. At least they did at that Holiday Inn down in Albert Lee, and they called them Sneaky Pete's. But because the wine and beer mixture was so wonderful, I thought, why not incorporate that into my beer and brat recipe and make it a beer and wine brat recipe and boy it's fantastic. Let's go to the recipe. Well those are yard glasses or half yard glasses and what they were doing is they were filling that ball in the bottom with wine and then they'd take it over to the beer tapper and they'd fill it up with beer and as you leaned it away from the bar and drank it would mix the two of them so you started out getting just beer then a little beer and wine and pretty soon you were drinking like almost 50-50 or mostly heavy wine at the end. They called them Sneaky Pete's. I think that's what they call them because I don't really remember the fourth set because I was drinking one too. And I got to thinking the other day, man, what if when you have a beer brat, if you added wine to that as well, in the same proportions that they were doing. In other words, two bottles of wine to only one bottle, not this big bottle, but an equal amount of wine, two times beer, one times wine. So I whipped it up in the kitchen the other day. Oh, it's absolutely fantastic. So I went and looked on the internet. Nobody has done the recipe before. So we're going to do it. Let's take a look at what we got going right here. Now when we bring all that goodness back in here and we get these brat buns. You want to get brat buns instead of hot dog buns. They're bigger so they'll hold a nice bratwurst. And we doctor them all up. I want these peppers to be in long slim slices so I can lay them on the bratwurst along with onions. So what I did was... I cut both ends of the onion off and then I'm just going to stand it up on edge, make some long slices this way, but I'm not going to dice them the other way. I'm just going to break up these little layers so I get my long little slices of onion and that's what I'm going to put in the pot to cook it up. Let's do this one here. We'll break up some of these. See now these will cook up real nice and there'll be a longer onion as opposed to a diced onion which wants to fall off your bratwurst. So let's get our little pot back here. Oh and one other little tip I was going to show you. And when we get out there to the grill, you'll probably think this is pretty incredible, but this is a regular onion. We're going to take the stem in. This is the root end back here. We'll take the stem in. And I'm only going to cut that much off because what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take one of these little red rubber gloves that I bought off the internet. I'm going to grab a hold of it and I'm going to use this to clean the grill. And it'll clean the gunk and everything right off your barbecue grill. If you'll clean it with an onion, it'll get so clean you'll just absolutely won't believe it. That's just a little tip I thought I'd throw that in there. Speaking of throwing stuff in there, let's get this pot happening here. I want to dump in some of these onions that I just cut up. I don't need this other guy because I got another bowl of them over here. And I'm going to get my peppers in there. Got a one full green pepper and one full, actually I got two green peppers, they were a little smaller, and one huge red pepper in there. And then, let me step out of camera here just for a second. 
And I'm going to put some chicken stock in here just for volume so I don't have to use quite so much. That's good right there. Now we're going to take this out to the grill and we're going to put it on the grill. And oh, I almost forgot. I also want to put in some Dijon mustard. And I'm going to put in, you watch that come out of there, probably a half a cup at least. And we're also going to put in about a quarter cup of garlic. Some of it's chopped up, some of it's minced garlic out of a jar. I just put about half of each because that's what I happen to have. And then we're going to take this out there and get this all happening. And then we're going to add our beer, then we're going to add our wine, and then we're going to add our brats. And I'll show you what we're going to do. Let's take this out to the grill right now. All right, we got our little red glove. You get a pair of them. And uh, our onion. Boy, that smells good, actually. I'm going to move this over here and clean a little more because this is where my brats are going to go to put a little crust on the outside of them in just a minute. Man, that slides nice and cleans that grill off. There we are. You can clean your barbecue grill with an onion. Let's take a look and see how we're doing inside here. Starting to heat up. I'm going to close this back up and let it get hot inside there and then we're going to cook all those goodies down just a little bit. And just for good measure, let me put in a little bit of butter in there. Kind of get that happening. And our Dutch oven is heating up nicely. Be back in a minute. Well, I'll have you know while we're inside monkeying around shooting the first part of this, it got dark on us, so this is where we moved our camera studio lighting outside. We got one of them out here, so you're out here with me. Ooh, it's starting to simmer around good. So we're going to take these brat. Now, these are Johnsonville brats, and I'm going to poke a few holes in one side with a toothpick. And then I'm going to flip them over. I know I'm going to grill them too, so you're probably thinking that they're going to dry out, but they're not going to. Because we're just going to put some marks on. They're going to spend most of the time being happy in this beer and wine and pepper and onion sauce. It's going to be good. A lot of stuff in there. Let's lay these down in here now. Perfect. This little Dutch oven just does a nice job for five of those Johnsonville brats. I'll give that plate to Sheila. Thanks, Sheila. Let me get these nestled down in here a little ways. They can start working their way down into this chicken broth, peppers, onions, mustard, garlic, neighbor dog. Um, he's, he's on camera now. He thinks he's going to show off a little bit. So now I'm going to let these warm up just a little bit, and then I'm going to add some beer and some wine to it. Man, oh man, would you look what we got going here. Are they looking good or what? Now it's time for some fun. A little bit of Michelob dark lager. And here's the nice part that I've realized about this Dutch oven that's a little five quart is you can put five of them in there and it only takes one bottle of beer to get it up around the bratwurst and a half a bottle of red wine. Trust me on this. That's that combination in that drink that tasted so delicious. Wait till you taste your brats in that beer and you can just smell it coming up out of there. It's absolutely so f phenomenal. I'm actually just kind of using the brats to stir that mixture with a little bit. And my, I got a pile of charcoals down here. I got this this uh, char griller, I think it's called. Let me see here, yeah, char griller, acorn by acorn. And I got her f about half full of, or about a third full of, of lump coal. Got the bottom wide open and the top open except for about halfway and it's been running right at about 400 to 425 degrees. And another nice thing, you don't have to mess with aluminum foil because your Dutch oven comes with a lid. Let's close it for about another 10 minutes and then we're going to move them from here from right here over to the grill where we cleaned with an onion and then we'll see what happens. See in a second. Let's give these things a turn because we got them where they're sticking out just a little bit. And see what you really don't want to do, we don't want to boil these. We want to simmer them and they're just simmering beautiful in here. And you see what we did. We started out 
with our onions and our peppers and all our other ingredients and then we poured the chicken broth in there. Then we closed it up and we let it heat up and just when it was getting ready to boil we added our bratwurst in there and we closed it up again and then bratwurst cooled it down again so it took a while to come back up and just when it was getting ready to boil we poured in our beer and wine and that cooled it back down again. So it's, it's been keeping it right at a real hot See, if I move these around, you can see the steam just pour up out of there. We've been layering them in there because we don't really want them to boil. We want them just to simmer good and get about 20 minutes like that. And then we're going to move them out here to the grill. Let me go ahead and cover that back up, though. All right. I'll see you in just about five more minutes. Now it's time to give these babies some color. Now remember, we cleaned this part of the grill over here with our onion. And now we're going to take some... Weber grill spray, and I know what you're thinking, we got a hot grill here, but this is non-stick and it's also the only non-flammable grill spray. Weber grill spray, and make sure you read the back that you get the non-stick and non, it says safe to spray on a hot grill, even open flame. So we're going to really coat this grill over here good. Notice it doesn't flare up, that's because it's that Weber non-stick, non-flare grill spray. Now let's move these babies out of here. Try to leave our uh, veggies behind. Oh man, I don't know if you can hear that little sizzle happening over there. It's doing good. Try to open my tongs for a quick second and let the let the veggies fall back in the pot. This works so perfect for my grill, and I think it will for years too, because I got kind of a smaller grill, like a medium size. It's almost like a cheap version of a big green egg or whatever. It's also got the cheaper price too. It's only like three dollars and <laughs> three dollars, three hundred ninety-nine dollars at uh, Lowe's. So let's go ahead and close these up and see if we can't get some color on these. Well, all right, let's take a look and see what we got happening. They sound good. Oh, perfect color. Not burnt, dark, golden brown. Look at that. Look at that. Are we proud of ourselves or what? Man, this ought to be on a TV commercial or something for Johnsonville Brats. Look at that. Mm -mm, mm -mm, mm -mm. Let's give it about three to five minutes on the other side. Put that brown. Then they're going back in the little pot just for a couple of minutes. Then we're going to take them in the house. Now, see, when you got a nice big grill and you got one of those big aluminum pans, they're great because you can throw more brats in and you can serve more people, that kind of thing. But for me and Sheila, this little five quart Dutch oven works sweet. Just remember, five quart, five brats. Two for her three for me, or four for me and one for her, or something like that, or two and a half each by the time we get in there. But I'm going to let these grill up on the other side, and then we're going to put them in here. And the neat part is we can either be outside and just serve right out of the little pot for me and her, or we can pick up the handle on this Dutch oven, carry it in the kitchen, which we're going to do, and serve them up in there. So, boy, you can smell that beer and wine when you open that, when you open that lid. That's just fantastic. And look at here. This is just right at the simmer point in here happening nice. So let's put these babies back to bed in here. Come on you little guys, hop up in there. Look at that. I hope that shows on camera how perfect them turned out. That is really nice. I've been wanting to do this recipe for a long time. Ever since I thought about playing that gig where they had that wine and beer in the same glass. And like I said, I did this recipe earlier before I ever did it for this cooking show and huh. You can just take that broth and take a little sip on a spoon, blow it till it's cool, and taste it. It'll knock you out. Well, there we have it. They're in there. Just by the time we take them in and let them rest long enough for it to kind of cool down so we can kind of deal with it, we're going to have a perfect product. So let's take these in the kitchen and plate them up. Let's take a look and see what we got in this wonderful pot of heaven and put some on these brat buns over here. Come take a look. Man, looky here. Let me just smell this for a second. Oh, God. That smells so good with that beer and that wine in there. Now, some people don't like bread, so I use this as my sample. In other words, I go ahead and I slice it up. Perfectly done in the middle. Look at that. Juicy. Soft. Then you can take them and put it over here 
for somebody that doesn't want the bread, but they still want the rest of the goodies. Let's see if I can get one of these. You can only not pick them up when you're filming. Let's put a little bit of sauerkraut on the side of this over here, just in case they want to touch a kraut. And let me go ahead and set this here. This lid shouldn't be too hot, I hope. And now let's get some of these wonderful veggies out of here. Wow. Trust me on this. This is awesome. There we go. Now that's if you want to just eat it straight up, you can eat it like that. But for all you guys that want a beer and a brat, here we go. Let's get our little buns in here. And we'll start out with one of these guys. And we'll do what we just talked about. A little bit of mustard. By the way, what is that yellow juice that comes out of the mustard container first? A little mustard on there. A little bit of sauerkraut. Am I making your mouth water at home yet? Because this is absolutely awesome. They might want it that way. Or we'll do another one. And make sure you don't get hot dog buns. Get brat buns. And these are kind of made of that yellow bread, almost like you get a Wendy's hamburger. Shake off a little of the excess juice. We know they're done because we did our sample cut. And we never let this come to a boil. Remember that. We had it simmer up with just the chicken broth and the veggies. Then we added our bratwurst. Oh man. Remember I sliced these long and thin? Does that look better than falling off in little teeny pieces? Oh, that's awesome. Now you can throw a little a little bit of mustard on there. And I wonder if that's open. It is. It is? Fan what, fantastic. A little bit of ketchup. There we go. Now my favorite way, which is pretty simple. Would you do me a big favor, Sheila? Would you go grab me some shredded cheese out of the refrigerator, please? Because I have to have my... I'm going to get some people riled up, but I don't care. I gotta have my Green Bay Packer bratwurst, pickled relish. This is just the way I like them. I don't care for sauerkraut, but I like lots of ketchup and I like lots of mustard. And then we need to make this a beer and wine Green Bay Packer bratwurst that we cooked here first. Then a little bit of cheese. Go pack. Go pack, got to have the cheese. And there you have it, folks. Unbelievable. You will not believe. Hold on. This stuff smells so good. Whether you eat it straight up or have it any way that you like to load up your bratwurst, man, try that. Unbelievable. If you like our recipes, right there is our subscribe button. Click on that. We hope you share this with everybody that's never had wine in their brat. And I see Sheila looking around the camera. She's wanting to remind you to go to shotgunred.com if you want a little shotgun red to kick his feet and help you barbecue. You can get these little guys at shotgunred.com. I don't normally do this on the air, but I'm going to go ahead and take a bite. I just got I already took a bite earlier. I'm sorry. Sheila, that is absolutely flipping fantastic. The flavor, you won't believe it. Try it. You have to do that recipe. And how come mine is the only recipe on all of YouTube where they do beer and wine brats? Because nobody else has played the Holiday Inn in Albert Lee <laughs> but me and watched them drink that out of that glass. And that's how I got the flavor into these bratwurst. We'll see you next time right here on Cooking with Shotgun Red. Sheila, are you ready for yours over here? I'm ready. Awesome. We'll see you next time, you guys. This is just... Fantastic. Turn the camera off. I got to eat this.